Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk more about mini system hydroponic. So mini system hydroponic is a great way to have fun indoors uh, during the cold months. You can actually do this all year long if you want to, but um, because right now it's very, very cold, I can't grow anything outside. So I do a lot of these things inside, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you can learn a lot and you can actually do quite a lot. Um, I grow mostly peppers, herbs, vegetables, and sometimes even fruit trees like this apple tree right here in these little systems. Uh, the systems are a lot of fun. It will teach you a lot about hydroponic because you're constantly doing something with it. Uh, the only drawback is that you would need to uh, look after the plants uh, quite a bit because the systems are so small, so they do require constant refilling. So this is somewhat of a uh, non-circulating method, um, but because the, the, the containers are so small, you have to keep refilling as the plants get bigger and bigger. So here I have two types of setup. One is completely hydroponic, and the other one in the back is sort of like a hybrid. So there's soil in there in the beginning, and then once the plants uh, begin to grow, then I feed them either uh, organic fertilizer uh, with water or just hydroponic solutions. And so let's talk about the hydro systems first. And so these are basically um, a water bottle that I just cut to this point right here. And then when you cut it to that point, it allows your net cup, which is a two inch net cup to sit right inside. And then you have this little space right here, like your reservoir. And that is how you feed the nutrients into uh, the container for the plants to use. And so um, the first question is, when do you start feeding your plants hydroponic nutrients? Uh, and the answer for that is as soon as the roots poke out of the net cup and you can see it hanging in the air. And if you see that, then you can start feeding the plants hydroponic solutions. And as soon as you do that, you're going to see that the plants will just grow crazy fast. Okay. And so the next question is how large will the plants grow in systems like this? It's, they're not going to grow very big because there's limited space. For some, for some reason, peppers just know that, or most of the plants that I've grown, they just know that as soon as the roots begin to like wound itself around and around and sort of like uh, become, uh, what is that, root bound inside this little cup, it knows that there's no more space to move around. And so they will stop growing and they begin to produce. And so they will start producing uh, flowers and then, you know, after that peppers were set. Okay, so I have uh, two examples here of plants that are very small and are already producing, you see that? So that flower will turn into a fruit, pepper fruit, pretty soon. And as you can see, the plant is not very big. So the plant just automatically knows that there's no more room and they will begin to produce flowers and then those will turn into peppers, you see? So these two right here, they're not very big. And uh, you don't have to prune the plants, but I do sometimes when uh, the leaves get so big, that, uh, depending on what variety you grow, sometimes the leaves are massive at the top. And what that does is it covers the bottom shoots from getting any light and what when, when i'm using um land lights like the arrow garden it's not very strong so it would not be able to penetrate down to here and so that does require some pruning and so what i usually do is i'll take the large leaf by just pinching it off and you see and it allows the lights to get through into the bottom shoot right here like that and so uh, pruning is uh, sometimes a sometimes a good thing when you grow in systems like this it just um, allows the plants to you know get lights to the bottom 
but also you can actually control how tall the plant would get and so see this one here i didn't prune the top and it as you can see it is a lot taller than this one here so this one here i i, I trimmed it initially down here and then when i cut the top the sides begin to grow and so if i want to uh, get these sides here to grow up then i would just pinch the top off that way it allows the sides to grow and if i don't do that the plant is just gonna you see how the the, the there's flowers at the top and it's gonna fruit at the top right here and the side branches would not grow very well and with this one here, same with this, right now it's focusing on uh, fruiting. So this, these sides may not grow very well. And so what I would do is I'll just pinch that off like that. And then allow the plants to focus the, the energy back into the, uh, the bottom shoots. And uh, what is the advantages of this? The advantages is that <laughs> you can keep the plant very small because I want the plant to be small and that is the reason why I did that. Uh, the disadvantage is that it set the plants back quite a bit. So it'll take a few weeks for these to actually go back and then catch up to where it was when it still had the top on top right here. And so yeah, the setback is it's going to delay your plants a little bit. Uh, but because I'm growing in hydroponic, there's always nutrients available. Uh, there's no, uh, what is it, season? There's no season. It's always constant temperature all the time. And then, you know, I'm just going to let the plants grow to whenever. And so that is why um, I don't really um, worry about pruning the plants drastically like this. Uh, the next question is, uh, is it harmful for the plants if you have algae grown at the top of the sponge or the, the rock wool cube? You see there? So the, you see how green that is? And basically those are all algae. And uh, you really don't want that. But uh, because there is nothing on top of it, uh, sometimes it's just that's just the way it is and if you want to reduce the algae you can put something like this like clay pebbles on top and all that does is it blocks lights from getting on top of that that little sponge or the rock wool and then you can reduce the amount of algae um, grown in the container as well as the top of the rock wool and you see uh, this is a little cleaner you see it less algae because of the uh, you know i'm blocking the lights from getting through as much as possible anytime you have too much lights penetrating through into the the reservoir you're going to get algae and if there's too many uh, too much algae it's going to uh, compete for resources with your plant it will deplete the oxygen level in in there and so you don't want too much algae, you see? So occasionally I would take the container out, uh, just lift the plant like this. It's pretty easy, you see? And then rinse it, rinse the container, get rid of most of the algae as possible, and then you put it back, and then you get a, a nice and clean little reservoir. And so that's how I prevent algae from getting in there. Uh, another question is how often do you refill? So the, that is a bit, um, uh, it depends because when the plant is smaller, you probably don't have to refill for like a week at a time. And when the plants get bigger like this and with flowers and stuff like that, probably every two days just you know dump out the the little bit that it, it it has left and then pour in the new nutrients uh, for the plants to use and so i'll give you an example so let's just say i only have this much at the bottom left so what i would do is i would just pour it out you see and so now it needs to be refilled and so when i refill it back I would give it fresh nutrients 
and I would give it back right up to the bottom of the rock wool cube. You see that? Where it touches the rock wool. And uh, the, you know, the little play, the little roots around the, uh, the sides right here with hairs and stuff like that, those are your air roots. And everything beneath the, the reservoir is your water roots. So the water roots would take in nutrients and uh, water. And the air roots, which are coming out of the side with hairs and stuff like that, that's for the plants to use for breathing. And uh, as soon as you don't fill it all the way up here, covering all of the roots, it's going to live for as long as you keep it alive. So remember, always fill it back to where the, it touches the bottom of the neck cup. And that's it. Do not go above. And if you happen to accidentally go above, just pour it out and it should be fine. The plants won't die immediately if you drown, if you, tr if, you know, if you, it's drowning, it'll take a few days. And so when you see the plants is, you know, are drooping, leaves are starting to fall off. That is probably the reason. And uh, you can also grow fruit trees. Look at my apple tree, guys. This is awesome. And so you see how tall the apple trees is? And that is the problem. Growing fruit trees, they grow extremely fast. You can literally see this grow every single day, like a little bit. And uh, it's amazing how fast they grow. But then the problem is you're going to run out of space. And uh, that's, that's with fruit trees. And then these mini systems here, this is half soil and half hydroponic. And so you see that I have a little hole cut at the top of the cup. That's where I dropped the seed initially. And I have a straw. The straw goes all the way down to here. And I just left the, the cup closed as it is. Put a little seed in there. Wait for it to grow. And once it grew, it'll just find the light and it will put itself out, the, you know, out of the hole. And then it will just keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. And then once it gets really, really big, you can start feeding it and so the straw is how i feed the plant because if you you, you don't want it to you know open the lid each time because you open the lid you yank up the plant you pull up the roots you do all that stuff so you need a way to to put water into the the container without any disturbance and so the because the cup came with the straw already so i left the straw in there and so this is how i feed it you know, i have this little thing right here and i just pour water in there like that and as you pour water in there you can tell you can tell by the weight of the container after you do this for a while you can you get used to the weight of the container when it's, it's dry in there and the plant needs feeding the container is very very light but also you can see the color it's much lighter and then once you put water or nutrients in here it begins to get darker because you know the the water get, you know soak into the roots and soil and it becomes like a darker color and you can tell and then the weight also and uh, that's really as simple as that it's pretty pretty fun and you see i have flowers and um there's pollen on there on there already so i should get a, a fruit in a in a few days and uh, i do prune the bottom right here i just pull out all the leaves that way it's nice and clean and uh, I can get to the straw and also you don't anything down here is, is is waste anyway because they cannot get any light you see how it's like it's fan out like an umbrella and so the lights cannot get through here so those are just wasted leaves so pull those out and uh, uh, make it nice and clean and then for this because the cup is really really small and the plant is pretty big i do feed it daily and so that's uh, another drawback about uh, systems like this it's a lot of fun uh, you can get a lot of peppers guys i mean last time i did this in a uh, a whiskey bottle if you haven't seen that video you should check it out and i got a ton of peppers and with this system right here there's already a ton of flowers so easily 30 40 50 peppers maybe and uh, you can have any time you want, and uh, it's a it's it's awesome. So uh, try it out uh, if you have don't have a lot of space. Uh, these systems are just so much fun, and uh, you will learn so much knowledge that you can apply to to your garden outside as well, or your your larger hydroponic setups. So I hope that answers some of your question. Thank you so much for watching.
please like, comment, and subscribe.